All right, everybody, how's it going? Uh, welcome to, I, I guess, a, a new series. It was something that uh, people were wanting uh, for a little bit now, and that is a local to global. And uh, I'm kind of changing it up from uh, maybe what I did with TW uh, of doing a modern day one. Uh, I was kind of looking through some historical ones, and I think the best one for it kind of the best bang for your buck as far as uh, mods go to see the they seem the most polished is uh this one that i have right now which is 1997 so uh gives you a solid amount of years to y you know get brand new fighters i mean a good portion of the um, because <clears throat> I, I don't think there's a ton there's not a ton of companies uh, as you'll see on the next thing and there's not a ton of fighters, but they there is a lot of current day ones that end up sort of, uh, g you know, generating into the world after a while. Pretty much all the way up to at least at least like 2015, 2016. I know like this this uh, this particular database has you know guys who have just been around for a little while, like Sage Northcutt or. Mickey Gall, so they have, they have those guys in there. So you're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be able to get at least a good twenty years of, uh, of guys just kind of generating throughout this. So it'll be interesting to see some of the uh, maybe the more legendary names uh, of the past show up basically as inexperienced rookies, and see if maybe I can grab them or if they're gonna be <laughs> a little too good to. Uh, to be signed by us and get signed by somebody else. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, this is uh, the character that I picked. I, I basically narrowed it down to people that were actually um, Americans. And I picked this guy just because I liked his uh, uh, his, his um, nickname, the Giant with Attitude. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll play as John Hess. Hey, Jack, what's up? Um, I figured the best thing, at least for a local, because I'm I'm not as big on knowing what I'm doing as far as small companies are concerned in this game. So I feel like to give myself the best possibility of uh, not going immediately bankrupt, uh, I turned my negotiation all the way up to 10, because the less money that I have to shill out for fighters, I think the better. Uh, eye for talent. You know, that that's nothing I really care about. Same with scouting. I feel like that's something that um, I can kind of figure out on my own. Uh, matchmaking, I would like it to be a little bit higher, but, uh, you know, putting putting more into Silver Tongue as well as uh, promotion. A little bit more what I, uh, what I want, so... Uh, I think that'll... I think that'll help me out, and I think that is actually... Ooh, I haven't checked the preferences, but as far as presets go, that is the hustler. So that's uh, that's what I ended up choosing because I wanted to have the least amount of money that I'd have to spend on guys as possible. So uh, I'm just doing default values on these uh, pro preferences. I have not an idea of how this works. I haven't checked this. Let's see, smart matchmaking. Fighters are unavailable. Be shown on. Okay, yeah, I think just about everything on here, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep as is. That's the way, that's the way it looks like I would want. The only thing I could possibly change is scouting Fog of War. Um, but you know what, I think I'll, I think I'll uh, stick with it being on for right now. Uh, I'm not, I'm not too picky about that. So into that as an avatar, as you can see, there is a grand total of five companies. Uh, four of them are, you know, the actual legit companies: uh, Pancrase, uh, Pride, Shudo, and UFC. And then I made, <laughs> I made uh, my own, my own uh, local one. I feel like I should have followed that that uh, logo style. <laughs> Probably would have done me a little bit better if I had done that, but uh, I got this one: Revolution Fighting Championship. Uh, so yeah, it is. 
I'm doing basically what I did with um, TEW. It's got no money, no popularity or anything, but it's a top five promotion because there's only five promotions. I'm trying to think. I don't think there really was, at least at this time, really any other major promotions. No Bellator, 1FC, Ryzen, PFL. That will come later. Um, what year is it? 1997. This is this is 1997. I guess I should reiterate that. Uh, so, yeah. I'm guessing there probably wasn't hardly any uh prom- like hardly any promotions at that point. So, yeah, Bellator 1FC Ryzen PFL, they are in this game. They'll show up later. Uh once once that shows up. Uh you know, Elite XC Affliction. I should put uh oh god, I can't even remember what what promotion it was. Uh the the one that the one that Cam Soda did that's that's what I should put in I should put Cam Soda Legends <laughs> there's only so many like legendary companies but that that should be something that will open in like 2018 is Cam Soda Legends um, but yeah got this set up uh, there's only four other companies to shoot for but then again there's not that many fighters <laughs> you're gonna start off with not a ton of fighters. And the fighters that show up are not going to be of the the greatest uh, the greatest uh, degree to start off with. Uh, there will be some decent guys, of course. If you just look at UFC, uh, you got you know Dan Severn. I feel like some of these guys I should know a little bit more, but you know Mark Coleman's probably their their big draw right now. Uh, let me see here, Tank Abbott, Vitor Belfort. So yeah. I can only imagine Belfort's probably quite young in this. And then, uh, once again, other guys I'm not 100% sure about. And then Pancrase, of course, you got Boss Rutan. Uh, let me see here. Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. Minoru Suzuki. Uh, let me see. I kind of remember Yuki Kondo. I can't remember why. And I'm trying to remember because I feel like he might have been in Pride. Like there's Ricks and Gracie. Maybe he was in Shudo. Man, I have no idea. Let's see. I'm just kind of looking at the names right now and seeing if I can notice anybody else. Oh, that's all right. Well, either way, Revolution FC, a complete unknown, uh, playing as the owner, of course. Uh, with no no money to my name and just hoping to build up off of that. So here we go. Of course, Boss Rutan topping that off. Uh, let's see, world rankings. So you got guys like Boss Rutan. Uh, Ken Shamrock, who um, is on hiatus. Return date unknown. Of course, this is 1997. So uh, his return date probably won't be for... Uh, a few years. Uh, I think same thing with uh, Don Fry. Don Fry is also on a hiatus. I don't know if you could try to. Uh, yeah, he's not willing to negotiate with anybody. So uh, you got two two top guys who uh, are pretty much uh, not here. Who uh, is they're just they're just not going to be there for a little while. Eventually they'll come back uh, worse off than they <laughs> worse off than they were when they left. But uh, yeah, so I'm thinking I'm thinking it's probably going to be at least three or four years for Shamrock. I can't remember when he actually left WWF and went back into MMA. And I don't know if that happened before or after NWA TNA started up. Of course, Dan Severn just decided to do both anyway. So that's nothing there. So, let's see. Not enough free agents to fill out the free agent ranking. So, I guess the main thing I have is I have absolutely nobody. Uh, I guess I should, you know, show that. I have... uh, Where is the... Oh, my goodness. All right. There's the popularity. Nothing. Nothing thus far. So, I am a complete unknown. Uh, Right now, I have one weight class. Open weight. It is... 
everyone just piles into one. And I have an open weight belt. I might not do like an actual open weight championship match for about a year or so. Kind of let some of these guys get their uh, get their feet wet as uh, as fighters. So the key here is I want to get uh, the cheapest possible guys. So I'm going to go with uh, males. Let's keep it under about 30 years old for right now. And they have to be based in America because I'm a complete unknown, so I can't get anybody from outside of that. And their max name value is unknown. And there you go. <laughs> that is who we got. The cool thing about WMMA, though, is that you can actually uh, populate fighters, which is probably what I'm going to do. So, yeah, I'm going to make sure to keep keep guys who are generally under 200 a fight. And uh, just on the off chance that they get pretty big, I'm going to give them like 10 fights. So hopefully they're not asking for too much money uh, for, for a little while. So I'll just keep it like that. Four years, 10 fights. There you go. Just as many fights as possible. So that God forbid they, f they fight in a lot of fights. I don't have to worry about uh, uh, re-signing them for money that they might be worth later on. <laughs> So we get two guys there, but WMMA has a nice little thing, which I'd like I would like TEW to have, which is populating fighters, and I think that's how I'm going to roll with this. Is I'm basically going to grab some heavyweights. They're going to be poor, and they're going to be rookies, and we'll just we'll just throw about 20 of them in there, and it's just going to be it's just going to be 20 guys that are complete unknowns, complete crap guys I, i'm basically i'm basically roaming the streets trying to find uh some 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 guys i feel like i might have screwed something up here i don't know if i i feel like i just screwed something up because i don't see them populated at all and i figured they'd probably show up about here uh let me see here all right so we got we got some other guys here so we'll probably grab these guys as well. Let's see. Paul Jones, $100 a fight. Let's see. 10 fights, four years. Make an offer. Uh, Makako Joe Morea. Yeah, why not? Let's go ahead. Grab him as many fights as possible for about four years. So starting off with just a lot of complete unknowns. And then hopefully I can grab maybe some guys on their uh, on their first on their first go around as a uh, as a fighter. Bad HPW on YouTube. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. There we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to redo this and see about repopulating fighters. America male heavyweight poor. Rookie, 20. All right. Let's see if we can grab. There you go. All right. There are some randomly created guys that should help out. Oh, okay. For as poor as they are, a lot of guys with some uh, some marketability to them. Wow, $230. Wow, they're really not giving me... Uh, they're giving me some expensive guys. But he's got some strong striking and strong marketability, so I think he'll be he'll be one of the guys we can uh, build around here. I imagine this is kind of how it went in 1997, anyway. It was just a lot of people that uh, that were just pretty good showing up. <laughs> I like his nickname too, Punch Proof. Uh, Bruce the Spaceman Br Baker. All right. So I think over time we'll we'll get some uh, name guys. I feel like maybe at some point we'll have to get at least like one, at least one or two name guys uh, to kind of up the uh, the the levels here. Hey, Budden, what's up? Hulk, Cody, Keith. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it under two hundred. I did. I got that dude at two thirty. Um. Uh, here we go. Clinton Robert Rabid Animal Evanovich. 
There we go. Ten fights. There we go. Let's see. Cody Keith. Uh, he's 160. So, yeah, I'm just going to start grabbing anyone I can for four years and ten fights at minimal amount of, uh, of, of money. <clears throat> So let's just go ahead and just start scooping up some complete unknown guys here. We already grabbed that guy. 190. All right, he's got something here. 10 fights. And this is going off of the fact that someone might still end up uh, getting these guys anyway. You know, UFC might be like, well, we need to pad out our events, so... We're going to go ahead and scoop up some of these guys. So I'm, I'm kind of expecting that to also happen. Uh, let's see, 220, 100, 150. There we go. <clears throat> and let's see here, 170, okay. Not haven't offered him a contract yet, so four years, ten fights. Just start throwing contracts at people. Eh. All right, hundred and fifty. I could take that. I gotta stop hitting my microphone. Probably be a solid idea. Hope you guys are doing well today. It's been a weird, it's felt like a weird day. I nearly got hit on the way home. Some SUV just like, just kind of pulled out from the, uh, from the apartment complex without even thinking like there could possibly be someone trying to, trying to turn. And then I had a, I had another guy. That's how I, that's how I like ended my night coming home. How I began my day was I was stopped at a uh, at an on-ramp. Now the way the on-ramp works is the the way the on-ramp works where where I'm at is that the lane merges with another turning lane. Like there's a turning lane from the main road and people turn left onto it and get on. And that lane merges. But the thing is is that there's a nice big yield sign because there's no like lane to actually get into to like merge with them. You basically have to stop and wait for them all to pass. So I'm stopped there and I just hear this honking behind me and it's just I'm sitting there like basically just motioning out my window that there's a car just right there. Like there's still a truck showing up. So it was it was uh irritating me. Uh, and I just found out today about the uh, about the uh, NBA 2K19 thing. I don't know what to, I don't know what to think about that honestly because on one hand it's cool that they added like a lot of uh, extra potential online playability but then again I'm not really an online player number one. And number two, it's a lot of extra bullshit that they probably could have put towards something else related to the game. All right. So we got a lot of guys to uh, potentially sign here. And the great thing is, is because with how few people and how few uh, companies there are, these days are going to go by uh, lickety split. So that'll be that'll be good. Are they already trying to? Yep, they're already trying to get one guy. As I figured. There you go. Ba ba ba. Should take a couple of days here. Oh, yep. See, they're trying. They're already getting ready to sign some other guys here. All right. So we got one, two, three. He didn't sign. Four, five. He's probably going to sign with UFC. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. So we got, we got what, 11 guys right now? That's good. 
we're, we're solid start. Now, I think the most I would need right now is probably about 16. I want to go. I want to go about 20. I think that's what I'm what I'm shooting for here is about 20 guys. So I have a little bit of leeway with guys. And uh, he's going to go ahead and sign with them. Let's see, four, five, six, seven. So we're at 18 guys. That's enough to fill out a card. And we have about three guys, none of which are going to sign with us. So we might as well get, try to get that done. Just let it go a couple of days here. There we go. Dan Severn joining Pride. Oh, damn. A lot of guys join Pride. Pedro Rizzo. <laughs> I can only imagine how that would be. Of course, he's got a fight against Mark Coleman at UFC 12. Uh, next week. <laughs> Dan Severn versus Mark Coleman. Tank Abbott versus Kimo Leopoldo. Oof. Uh, I just want to make sure that this, that these bids end and I don't have to deal with that. All right. So we got what? hundred trying to see if there's any other guys. It looks like that's about these are, this is what's it right here. So let's see here. Um, I've yet to make a contract offer with him. So we'll, we'll go ahead and toss him in here. Hundred bucks a night, why not? Doesn't seem to be anything particularly impressive about him. Hopefully he signs here soon. Because as soon as he signs, then I'll have my guys Uh come on. There you go. Alright, cool. So I can already make my first show. Uh, I might as well just I might as well just number them. I don't have. Uh, let me see here, Jesus. Say so Revolution One. We'll do it on a Saturday, and let's shoot for a month from now. Who's ready? Okay, everyone's available for a full camp, so we can fill out the card today. Uh, let's just go basic local. I want the I want the money that we're spending on this to be as like low as possible right now. So yeah, major show. So yeah, month from Saturday. <laughs> MMA is unregulated right now. That uh, that sounds about right. I wonder if that's okay. So it, it does change other other places. What is the lucrative part? Higher the value, the more money you can expect to raise from ticket sales, merchandise, etc. Yeah, that makes about that makes it. Why is Louisiana a little bit more? Maryland, Massachusetts. Damn. Oh yeah, if I went to Vegas, that'd be that'd be the place to go. Oh, these are all the other. The other places to go. Uh, no, let's let's stick to stick to doing some shows here in Iowa. Unregulated region. Drug testing is not mandatory. If you do choose drug testing, your company's own setting. Maybe the current settings. The cost per fighter is five hundred and sixty-four dollars. You know what? I don't think we need to do this drug testing thing. You know, I don't think they did that for a while. I'd love to know when UFC actually started drug testing people because I feel like it was pretty unregulated for a while. There we go. So yeah, I'm not. I certainly am not big enough to be broadcast anywhere. So yeah, there's there's nothing. Um, I think we're solid then. Everyone would be available to do a camp. Let's set it up. All right, the first revolution show. So yeah, pretty much everyone's on the same level here. So I could pretty much throw just about anybody in there. So let's go with maybe someone who has like a decent record. 
Uh, I see a couple of two and O's. Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's a hometown guy. Let's see. Hometown fighter. I don't think we have... I think we have but one hometown fighter. So, even though he's 0-1, he should be the guy. Let him juice. Let him all juice. It's not like it matters. Very good point. All right. So, looking at the betting lines, I want to make this a very... Uh, even match. So David Hood seems like one of the best possible ones. I'm trying to see their their styles are another thing to look at. Kickboxing Muay Thai. That sounds like that'd be a pretty good, pretty good payoff. Uh, let's see here. I would like Scott Baker to have a little bit more uh, going his way with this. All right, two kickboxers, 0 and 1, 1 and 0. I think I think that would work. So let's go with this guy. All right, so that could be our main event. Co-main will take uh let's take this guy. He's 2 and 0. Let's see, I think there's another 2 and 0 guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, they're pretty they're pretty close to one another. So yeah, we'll we'll book that fight. That'll be our co-main. If everyone's super no one is. <laughs> or in this case, if everyone is shit, no one is. All right. Bruce Baker seems to be far and away better than everyone else for some odd reason. All right. We have Ray Cooper. That's a possibility. Yeah, let's do it. That's about. This seems to be about as close as we can get right now. What's the styles? I didn't see. That's all right. Let's see. Cody Keith. Ooh, that one's really close. <clears throat> Kickboxing and Muay Thai. That should also make for a pretty good fight. <clears throat> Hire Marty for this promotion while you don't test. Hey, I mean, he still could show up wasted on pain pills, though. And then what? You know what? This guy's a brawler. I wonder if we have another dude who could potentially face him not really it'd have to be another uh like a kickboxer that's that'd probably be good brawler versus kickboxer uh let me see yeah we'll go ahead and do that <clears throat> Let me see here. Trying to see if there's anyone for him to fight. There really doesn't. Let me go down here. Let me look. I feel like this uh, Egan Inoue, we should have uh, something for him. Uh, Sam Cox? I think we could do that. That seems to be about the closest we can get. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu and wrestling? Okay. Okay. So we got six fights. We only need a couple of more. I don't know if I'm going to do like eight or nine. I might do eight and then just leave some open for uh, later. Let me see. Muay Thai. We, we could have a Muay Thai guy. That David Hood. We have that one. Ooh. Okay. Muay Thai. Muay Thai Taekwondo. That would be a good mesh of styles. And they'll do one with the freestyle wrestlers. So let's just throw one of the wrestlers in there. That's, you know what? That might be perfect right there. Done. All right. Eight. Eight fights on this main card. We're not going to have any prelims. We're not big enough for it. Only like eight people are going to show up anyway. So <laughs> it's the Marty way. Show up in a promotion where everyone's juice is wasted to a point. He'll be the one sent to rehab. All right. So eight open weight fights coming up. And uh, we can have up to ten. No prelim fights. That's not going to mean anything. Open weight title. Like I said, we're probably going to wait about a year or so. Uh, restricted hiring fighters. That's fine. 19 fighters total. And I think we can just kind of zip our way through. I'm going to go to 
I'm going to go to the end of the month. Yeah, you can see how quickly that's just flying by. We should see that we should see that UFC fight that happened. Now that I think about it. Uh results. Uh Mark Coleman beat Dan Severn by unanimous decision after fifteen minutes. Okay. Tank Abbott won. Tank Abbott won a fight. Interesting. Loves to call out. He's a trash talker. He's volatile. <laughs> Wonder what Dan Severns looks like. Accomplished wrestling. All comer. Short notice. Constant takedowns. Crusher. Loves to wrestle. Pressure grappling. Jesus. I mean, it is Dan Severn. Coleman. Accomplished wrestling. Fast starter. Loves to roll. Rumored PED user. <laughs> really? I'm shocked. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so we got some guys joining some teams. All right. I can't. I don't know if our okay our stability went down. Oh, financial issues. That's right, because we went through a month where we didn't where we didn't have anything, so we lost a little bit of money. Which I mean, sure, whatever. So yeah, we lost some we lost some money thanks to uh, signing people and then marketing a, a fight. <laughs> what? No way. <laughs> so I'll probably get it to about Saturdays and I'll just go Saturday to Saturday. Oh, I didn't even. That's right. I need to check. Yeah, we'll get to the beginning of the week or the beginning of the month because beginning of the month is when they're gonna start having people show up. So let's see if anyone uh, let's see if anyone maybe showed up. Laverne Clark, in fact, yeah, that's pretty good. We'll just do. I want to see how many people cut off at the low level regional to possibly get. Damn, J. R. Palmer, thousand a fight. We could shortlist him. Why not? That's probably a guy. Uh, 203, let's see, John the Machine Lober, I think I kind of remember that name. Uh, Laverne Clark, yeah, sure, why not, he's an Iowa guy, signed an Iowa guy to have some hometown fights, we can have some decent, uh, main events. He's only 130 bucks, why not? Matt Anderson... I could deal with that once we once we get a, at a point where I could sign you know guys for eight hundred a thousand a fight. Matt Hume, I kind of remember that name. We go ahead and add that. Randy Couture. I was gonna say young Randy Couture, but I guess young in the sense that he's thirty three years old. Let's just say, wait, okay, so that's 20, yeah, that sounds, I guess that sounds about right. He's in his 50s now. Yeah, let's go ahead and add Randy Couture as a possible guy. I don't know. Something tells me this dude might actually turn out to be somebody. I don't know. He's got strong ground skills, strong striking. He seems to be pretty good. <laughs> Young, in quotations. You know what? I might actually be able to build something around him. I think I think if we do that, let's do four years. We need a guy. I think that's what we need is we need a guy who can be like a drawing guy because what whatever this show's going to do, there's going to be like no star power on it. So we'll try to get somebody who's even low level regional. Like he's low level. He's coming in with like really no hype but it, like he's coming in with some hype at least so we'll see what happens Borklays are only not a dick ooh Pat Militich and no one's grabbed him either mid-level regional that makes sense that's right he had like Pat Militich had like hundreds of fights didn't he I remember that he did fight out of Iowa. But yeah, isn't 
Isn't that like Pat Milicic's thing? Is he had like hundreds of fights? 29 and 18. Okay, so he only had 38 fights. I thought there was another dude from Iowa who was like a real low level uh, fighter that fought like a lot. All, like all the time. Yeah, Pat Milicic is definitely a guy we'll have to look into as well. Um, yeah, I think we can basically move it on up to Saturdays. Oh, man. I love that. I love that Minoru Suzuki. Just that young, that young Minoru Suzuki. Oh, where the hell is he at? Wait, Pancrase? Yeah, Pancrase, right? Yeah, there he is, Minoru Suzuki. 28 years old, looking like he came straight out of, uh... One of those 90s dramas. It's probably where that hairstyle came from. Who's uh, uh, Sakuraba? That's who I was thinking of. Is he not? He might not. He might not be in Pancrase. I don't think he was in Pride or Shudo. Was Sakuraba around at this point? That's another thing I'm wondering about. <laughs> Bad touch alert. Uh, okay. Oh, look. UFC have approached Randy Couture. Oh, God damn it. Well, I'm not getting him. I guess Randy Couture is going to UFC. <laughs> Already. No. Uh, let me, let me, let me just reset this. I'd love to see. There you go, Sakuraba. Oh, he is. Okay, he's pride. Oh, wow. Oh, he must have just shown up. Shit. All right, shortlist him, because uh, Sakuraba is probably going to be another guy I'd want. All right, let me move this back down to unemployed men uh, based in America, and their max value is uh, unknown. <laughs> we want some unknown guys. All right. Uh, Laverne Clark needs to uh, hurry up and sign this contract. Well, I guess it won't matter because it'll still be a little bit before we do anything with them. I'll go ahead and move to Saturday. Looks like we're the next show coming up. So that's... Damn, look at that. Already we're there. Look at that. Just like that. It's, it's such a difference... With stuff to do in TEW compared to this, we just went through six weeks in under under 40 minutes. Um, okay, so yeah, I think... All right, visiting Next Generation MMA, so he's got it. He's signed with UFC. I'm utterly surprised. <laughs> so yeah, next Saturday. That is really the next show. All right, and it is time for our first event already. Weigh-ins happened yesterday. Everyone was on hand. Everyone made weight. I mean, there's really, like, <laughs> you can't miss weight when it's anywhere from 90 to 600 pounds. You know, you're not going to miss weight. <laughs> oh, God, do they already have a TV show? Jesus. Pancrase is uh, up on, uh, oh, Jesus. Minoru Suzuki versus Royler Gracie, co-main eventing. The Pancrase, King of Pancrase title. Kiyumi, Kiyuma Kunioko versus Boss Rutan, of course. Rutan's probably going to win that. Does it say? Oh, dude, Rutan is so much, oh, my God, far and away so much bigger. All right. Get your small flags and pom-poms ready. All right. All right, boys. It's time for our first official event. Hopefully we won't lose too much money. There's not a whole lot that's been put into this thus far, so let's go. 
So there you go. Our first official show taking place in Iowa, of course. Uh, very first revolution show ever. Uh, eight main fights, no preliminaries, of course. Scott Baker, the uh, the hometown boy, 0-1 right now. Uh, main eventing, you got Zachary White, 1-0 uh, from Jacksonville, Florida. You got uh, the Titan Randall Ward, Challenger Taylor Huey, Norman the Cyclone Austin. These names that they've created are just fantastic. And just Matthew Burton. And uh, five guys going for uh, Baker while two going for White. Looks like uh, White has the uh, weight advantage. That's all right. Uh, the Garner Keith versus Clinton Rabbit Animal Evanovich. Uh, a lot of people seem to be going for Keith on this one. And then Bruce the Spaceman Baker versus Brada Ray Cooper. Uh, Baker with the significant weight advantage. Also, he has a 6-1 to one staff pick there. Hulk, Cody Keith, and Bullet Donald Como. Uh, seems to be pretty even. Could go either way with that. Uh, Como has the weight advantage, but Keith has the reach advantage. So it should be interesting to see how this goes. Are these the wrestlers? No, these are kickboxers, so uh, could go either way there. Uh, Lawrence Morris versus Eric Martin. Morris has, Morris has the uh, weight advantage. I guess he's the heavyweight, and he's a welterweight. Oh, Jesus. Well, there's your open weight thing. But either way, could go either way there. Very split. Uh, Egan and Noe versus Sam Fireball Cox. Uh, Cox has the weight advantage and an 8-inch reach advantage. However, there seems to be a uh, uh, bigger bigger deal with uh, Egan and Noe. I guess I actually forgot to go through the actual rules for this. I think I actually have it um, if I if I pull it up. This is actually the rules. I, I guess I didn't do that. Um, probably should have shown that. Uh, will take place in the confines of a ring. I chose a ring instead of a cage. 10 point must decision. Uh, the slight differences that I did is uh, non-title matches. They're each going to go two five-minute rounds. If there is a clear winner after two five-minute rounds, then they are just going to decide at that point. Uh, if they feel like it is uh, split rounds between them, there is a deciding third round. Uh, same thing with the main event and non-title matches. I actually changed that since the last time I did that, so it's also two five-minute rounds with a potentially third five-minute decider round. Title matches, uh, when we get to those, are four five-minute rounds. Same thing. If uh, one guy's been, uh, you know, has the obvious round advantage, uh, they'll end it after four. If they feel like they need a fifth round to be able to decide, there is a deciding fifth round. Uh, just about everything else, let's see, strikes down opponent are illegal, separate the fighters, a lot of stuff that's illegal, knee strikes to the head. Uh, stomps to a down opponent, soccer kicks to the head. The one thing I did change uh, between that is the soccer kicks to the body I made legal. So uh, so the soccer kicks to the body will be legal. Soccer kicks to the head are not. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. Is chat empty or are you shut? No, you're not shadow banned. <laughs> not as far as I know. I just think it's, I, I just don't think it's, you know, a lot of people... A lot of people talking right this second. You know, that tends to happen, you know. You know, just a handful of people, even even in even at TEW, there's maybe like three or four guys at a time who will chit chat. Uh let's see, Matthew Burton versus Norman the Cyclone Austin. Burton, uh six to one advantage over that. Doesn't seem to be any significant advantages for either guy. And opening it up, Challenger, Taylor Huey, and the Titan, Randall Ward. Seems to be a 5-2 to two for a Ward. He also has a significant weight advantage, uh, but we'll see what happens there. All right, so Challenger, Taylor Huey versus the Titan, Randall Ward, in the very first fight of Revolution. Oh, you were just in the wrong room. Oh, Jesus. You love your big boy, but no one wanted this. WMA is the easiest game to win in ever. Is it? Once again, it's not something that I uh, I immediately know. It probably is, 
but uh, yeah, <laughs> everyone everyone desperately wanted a uh, a local to global, so I got a local to global. In fact, I have a local to global here starting in 1997. So we'll have we'll have very realistic people showing up for like the next 19, 19 to twenty years. I made a mistake watching Asian MMA once. Stomps were allowed. Oh, that must have been Ryzen. Ryzen is amazing. I actually don't watch. I don't watch UFC hardly ever, but I will watch a Ryzen event when it shows up. Oh, Jesus already ran to Ward with the tap out. 426 with the rear naked choke. I saw that he was uh, going for a lot of takedowns there. Okay, so yeah, both these guys looking to take each other down, and uh, Randall Ward ends up getting the better end of that and uh, ends up sweeping into a submission into a rear naked choke and tapping out challenger Taylor Huey, and he's going to go up to 2-0. and oh, Taylor Huey dropping down to 1-1. One and one. Great fight. Good start. Did, do you ever see the AI fail to gain popularity in WMA? Every company gets to national at least in the default data within a year. Oh boy. I feel like I've kind of accommodated for that, but we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, I, I will say like, I, I feel like I almost based it off of TEW where it's like, well, you know, it's obscenely hard to do a zero, 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 zero in TEW, at least 2016. So, I figured it would be somewhat close in WMMA, but I guess we'll find that out. <laughs> you know, maybe because this is a 97 mod, they might have changed that. Who knows? There's only like five companies anyway, so I'm guessing that most of the companies are going to get big. <laughs> What the people want is more college hoops 2K8. I I definitely want to do that. I'm not I'm not sure if I want to do that, mm, man. God, I don't know if I want to spend my time doing that tonight or not. <laughs> I was planning on doing another week of uh, Axis football because I'm behind on that, but I also kind of wanted to do college hoops. I'm not sure. I could do both. started nice and late thought about taking a nap and then just decided ah eh, fuck it i guess i'll just forego sleep all right round one nothing much happened there oh that's not good both guys want to know though so that's uh that's you know someone's at least gonna walk away uh two no at some time within the next month is good let me know if <laughs> that days without loss works for you oh god I do, I do remember that, and I actually set up my own ticker. I don't think I actually finished the ticker. I needed to do that. Damn it, because I got that, I got that set up. Uh oh, takedown. Nope, can't make it happen. And I, and I, uh, I, um, I have it for the bottom too, so that it, um, nope. Let's see what happens here. Let's see. And that's the end of round two, 10, nine, both tied at 19, 19. Let's see what the judges say. Judges scores being announced 2018 to Burton, 19, 19 and 2018 Burton. So it looks like it's going to be a majority decision finish. We're not going to have a third round. And Matthew Burton's going to take this after two rounds. Seemed like not a lot was going on there, but what do you expect with two kind of uh, uh, really not not good guys? Completely unknown. <laughs> this is you know you you pay a hundred you pay them a hundred dollars to show up and fight. You're you're not gonna get like top class guys here. Wow, Sam Cox with a fifty pound weight advantage should be good for the uh, jujitsu versus wrestling. Uh, stance here. <laughs> I can't wait till they go to the ground and uh, maybe Sam Cox will just throw his weight around on him. Do I not have a picture pack of not giving character a picture from the default set? Um, yeah, I didn't. I do have a picture pack, as you can see by this guy. He's actually in the game, but what I did was I randomly generated about 20 different guys. Uh, that were just really poor quality so that I could pay them a hundred bucks to show up and fight so I could put on some events 
and start start moving in on that um, without having to worry too much about um, uh, losing too much money. All right, round one, good round. 10-9 in favor of Vanoa. See what we got here. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's kind of interesting how they're standing, how they're looking to just stand and bang with each other. There we go. Now, as soon as I say that, that's when we get the takedown to, uh, to, to try to get some submissions here. I figured between wrestling and jujitsu, a good portion of it was going to uh, make that. Oh, and no, I got the arm triangle in. And Egan Inoue, 319 to round two, a fantastic fight. Getting the win, moving up to five and three. Looks like Cox is going to take his first loss. Inoue name checking everyone. Names all his various sponsors, friends, and family, of course. Happy to be here. Everyone's just happy to be here. Put on the technical difficulty screen, move the default sign on a set. Default set on a sign picture is a real world picture folder and assign them. Blank default guy was a vote work for people with eyes. Yeah, that's a good point. I should I could definitely do that. Assign some assign some pictures. I'll do that of course after this, because I don't I don't have uh I'll go through I'll go through this um I'll go through this episode like this. Because I'm probably only going to do a couple of... Uh, I, I'm only going to be able to really get through like a couple of uh, events anyway. So I'll uh, I'll get some I'll get some guys to uh, you know have some have some faces to them by uh, by next stream. Let's see, getting caught. All right, this is oh yeah, this is our kickboxing versus brawling. So it should be it should be pretty good. It should be. Uh oh. All right, cut was there. Like I said, I figured these guys just banging away at one another is probably going to produce something pretty good. Let's see, one, two. It seems like it seems like it's a lot of it's landing. I just realized he's also fighting at 185 compared to 242. Morris looks like he got the advantage of that one. I like how he's. I like how the kickboxer is training at uh, the Jiu Jitsu Academy. I mean, I guess I guess you could you could learn stand up there too. I just figured if he was gonna, well, maybe he's trying to trying to, you know. Get an all-around look. Dirty boxing. Oh my god, all this dirty boxing. <laughs> Morris just seems to be like manhandling Martin. I think that's just what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna say that it looks like Morris is just gonna get this in two rounds. And we're not gonna need any sort of uh Yeah, we're I don't think we're gonna need a third round. I think Morris has this one. 10-9. 20, 2018 all judges let's see what we got all three judges 2018 Lawrence Morris we don't need a third round he just dirty boxed his way to another win there we go name check and that is it Hulk Cody Keith versus bullet Donald Cummo Cummo or Kumo I don't know Either way, 6'4", 258 versus 6'2", 281. Jesus Christ, that dude is yoked. <laughs> Donald Kumo. <laughs> and he's 6'2", 280, so this is like some fucking Bob Sapp shit going on here. That's 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 our Bob Sapp right here, Kumo. Oh, look at that. Oh, gas. He's already gassed, too. There you go. This really is our Bob Sap right here. <laughs> before Bob Sap, before Bob Sap, there was Donald Cummo. <laughs> oh, the other ones. Both guys are tired. Trip takedown. Nope. All right. Now I'm now I'm hoping that uh, that Cummo wins. I want uh, I want this guy to win. I hope he can. I hope he can get himself uh, a sloppy clinch. Bit of a snoozer. Ten nine to come. Oh, all right. 
It's probably Kumo, and I'm just being an ass right now. <laughs> the verge of exhaustion. He's so done. <laughs> All right, all right. Are they still? So you got here. Keith doesn't have much. Of course, they're both completely gassed out right now. Sloppy clinch. Keith gets the takedown. Oh my god! Come on. Como needs to get something here, otherwise we're getting to a third round. I'm thinking that's probably what's going to happen here. Keith seems to have just a little bit more left at the tank. No, nope, no, nope, never mind. Oh my god. Both these guys are just gonna pass out on one another here. <laughs> I think Keith won that round, so it looks like we're gonna get a third round here. It's gotta happen. Ten nine Keith. Alright. We get to a deciding round, let's see. Nineteen nineteen. Twenty eighteen Keith. Twenty eighteen Keith. Oh my god. He wins it on the fact that it was he might have won by 10-8. He might have gotten a 10-8 win there. I guess Kumo didn't have what it takes. He was way too gassed. Hulk Cody Keith getting the win. Good wrestling but weak chins. Every about to end in submission or knockout preferably within two rounds, yeah. What do they rate that as? Average? Alright, I'll take that. Uh, just a good guy. He's a charismatic talker. All right. Bruce the Spaceman Baker, Brada Ray Cooper. Let's get this on the way. Major size disadvantage. Oh, my God. One, five, seven, 170 versus 6'3", 251. Jesus. All right. Well, that's a thing. So Baker's probably just going to, like, I imagine he's probably going to maybe submit him. I feel like he can more more or less have his way with him in that regard. Let's see. Halfway through the rounds, seems to not be a lot going on. Stay hydrated bot showing up to let me know to drink. <clears throat> God, it's already 5 a.m. Are you kidding me? I guess I, I guess I started this pretty late. <laughs> See, what we got all right, 10-9 in favor of Cooper. So Baker's gonna have to uh, Baker's gonna have to come in here. Oh, shoot him in! No, sprawled it. Is he gonna get? Is he gonna get gassed now? Two, two, three, six, three, two, fifty-one. 63, 251. Baker looking shattered. Oh, my God. Baker's looking really tired. Oh, no. Cooper's going to beat him by the fact that he's just... These guys are just... That really is what it seems to be coming down to is who who's, who's going to tire out first. I was going to make these, like, 10-minute rounds. I'm kind of glad I didn't. Imagine how bad that would have been. <laughs> Oh my god. Round two. 10 9 to Cooper. So it looks like 2018 Cooper, probably. 1919, 2018 Cooper, and 1919. Oh man, majority draw. All right. Because it was a majority draw. Here we go. Third round. Cooper doesn't have left in the tank. Both these guys exhausted. Oh my god. Come on, Baker. I need I need my big boys to uh, to make this happen. I need I need a I need a big boy to to really uh, make this happen. Oh my god! Oh my god! I was really hoping that was oh shit! He got the takedown. Oh, but he's so tired. Oh my god! Oh, he took down Cooper, but then Cooper just decided to submit him. Jesus. Real world guys are just as shit as the terrible creations. It's a beautiful disaster. I mean, it's guys who were around in '97. You know, the the bar was not set high at that point in time. You know, this is when Tank Abbott was like a really legit fighter. <laughs> was like noteworthy. 
Cooper got it by the fact that he just ensnared an arm and just went at him. All right. Clinton, Rabbit Animal, Evanovich, and Garner Keith, both guys sitting at 2 and 0. Oh. Big strike already. Oh, my God. He's out. He's out. It's over 26 seconds. Clinton, Rabbit Animal, Evanovich rocks Garner Keith in 26 seconds. Holy shit. That's a big dude, too. Holy crap. 6'5", 275, collapsing in a heap with a knockout punch. Jesus. All right. Well, that one's it. That's it. <laughs> George Evanovich or Clinton Evanovich. Very happy. is a charismatic performance. He's a very good talker. Jesus Christ. All right. Main event, Scott Baker. The uh, the the home the hometown boy five ten two ten versus Zachary Hellhound White six three two eighty one. Let's get this a moving. John McCarthy was he around at this time? I don't know, but here we go. It's time. Got the hometown boy. Let's hope. Let's hope he win. I should have. I should have put a little bit of hype on this. Oh, takedown by Baker. Okay. Oh, my God. It's over already. Oh, my God. Minute 48. It's over already. Holy Jesus. Wow. The amount of time on some of those fights. And then just this. Scott Baker in a minute 48. Lock it in the Americana. Tap it about, and it's over. And the hometown guy. Opening up his revolution debut with a win. Commercial rating is zero because these guys are completely unknown. Critical rating is 76, though, so that's good. 35 people paying $1,300. What? Something about that figure doesn't sound right. I want to know. This might be why it's considered so easy. 1386 gate amongst 35 people. So it's about 40 bucks a piece for this show. I don't know if we'd actually be able to get away with charging 40 bucks a piece. Then again, there is like a kind of an unknown um, MMA company around here, here in, uh, in Des Moines that has kind of a bunch of no name guys that charges at least like 40 bucks for some front rows. So I could see it. All right, 35 guys, by the way, are popularity increased by 0.01 or 0.1%. All right, uh, knockout of the night. Yeah, Evanovich and Keith. Uh, I'm going to give it to Scott Baker for submission of the night. Ian Inoue seemed to have uh, done his, uh, his damnedest against Sam Cox. It was considered a fantastic fight, so I think I got to give it to give it to them. But yeah, submissions, submission for for the hometown guy. It's only like 150 bucks anyway. All right. We lost $2,400. Clinton Ovenovich getting the most money at 560 and no way Baker, but we managed to get away with some of these guys not having to take a lot of money. <sighs> Hopefully that merchandise money will pop up once they get their name out there a little bit more. <clears throat> and, we are immediately considered a uh, low level regional, which is probably uh, not much. Yeah, two point five. We're we're two point five, but it's something. So I think that means we could do yeah, America, Canada, or Mexico. That'll be solid. Unfortunately, there's no one in America worth getting right now. I really wish I could do North America rather than just America, Canada, Mexico. Uh, the Ronin Carlos Newton. His style is Dragon Ball Jiu-Jitsu and sign. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I want you. It's a real dude, too, so... How did how did his career turn out? This is 1997, so Carlos Newton, Carlos the Ronin Newton, 
He went 16 and 14. His last fight was back in 2010. Uh, looks like he had some pride fights, uh, some UFC fights. He had a fight against Anderson Silva in 2003. Uh, let's see. He beat Pat Milicic out in 2001 in UFC 31. Uh, had a loss to Sakuraba. Had a loss to Dan Henderson in 98 both times. Interesting. I'll take it. <laughs> I don't know who he is, but I want him. Let's see if Mexico's got anybody like that. Nope. Okay. Not bad. This guy is legit good. Former UFC champion. Oh, that's a, that's good. It looked like he had a lot of back and forth, like wins and losses. So I didn't really even check if he's if he's like a former champion or not. But yeah, low level regional. Sam Cox has a minor hand injury, so how long is he expected to be out? Four months and three weeks. All right, well, that's why we got uh, some extra guys sitting around. DBZ hadn't aired stateside in 97. He must be a serious otaku. I mean, the original Dragon Ball was... Now I want to know when the original Dragon Ball was. It had to have been like 94, 93? Oh, never mind. The original Dragon Ball was in 86. Oh, Dragon Ball Z was 89 to 96, at least originally. So stateside, 97. Oh, man. Dragon Ball Z was already done by the time it came to America. All right. Yeah, this guy is a serious otaku. That's a, that's a, very, good, that's a very good look. Stability, 93%. All right. Rising in size. That's good. We lost a lot of credibility. The lack of ranked fighters appearing at Revolution 1. That's ah, fine. Here, do we have any rankings now? There you go. We got some ranked fighters now. Egan Inoue, Laverne Clark, David Hood. There you go. We got some ranked guys. All right. Um, right. Let's, let's just take a look and see when our next show could possibly be. Uh, wait. So I'm shooting for, like, April. Let's do, like, April week three. See who's available. All right, that's a lot of guys who aren't available. Let's just go forward another week. All right, now we got all right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's not eight fights worth. So I'm going to keep going until we only have about three guys who can't go. All right, I'd like to have these guys show up. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep looking. There we go. All right, May week two seems to be like it's the one that we're going to. Or yeah, May week two seems to be the one. Uh, so we'll just I think we'll have to wait a little bit on that, but that's when we'll do the next one. I still want to do basic local because I want to make a little bit of money. But we're technically a regional. Now, how much money is that going to cost us? 8000 Yeah, go fuck yourself. Basic local. Well, uh, we'll try to get some asses in seats for Revolution 2. Who's going to be there? We don't know yet. Actually, we can, we can build up Laverne Clark and... Uh, he's coming off a victory. We can maybe grab him. Wayne Cuthill. So we'll put we'll put one fight on there. I don't know if these two guys can maybe. That's not too bad. Let's see here. Open weight ranking number three. Uh, that might work. All right, so we'll put those two out there. There we go. So we got two fights, and over the next uh, little while, we'll have we'll have more fights coming up. Ooh, I want to see what happened in Pancras. Boss Rutten, the king of Pancras Championship. Uh, Takaku Fuke cut. Oh yeah, he's in Japan, so it's not like I'm going to be able to grab him. Uh, let's see what happened here. Royal Gracie beating Minoru Suzuki. Oh, boy. 
Suzuki, what is you doing? Thirty nine hundred dollars a fight, by the way. When's the next time he's gonna fight? Well, he could fight within the next couple months. All right. Uh, let's go to. All right. So, go a week to uh, the beginning of March and see if anyone shows up in uh, in March. Oh, there's a UFC show. We'll have to look at that. And oh, a couple of shows. Okay, there's a there's a few shows that just happened. All right. Let's let's take a look at this. Uh, results. So that was the Pancras. Then we had, yeah, uh, Pride, Mark Schultz defeating Royce Gracie. Oh, shit. All right. Poor Gracie ended up not actually getting there. Pancras, uh, see if there's anyone. Okay. Let's see what happened here. Randy Couture booked to face Chester Bradburn. And Carlos Newton signed a standard contract. I'll just I'll just automatically put him like he's gonna he's gonna fight somebody. Should he face Clinton Evanovich? He could. Evanovich really just knocked the crap out of somebody. And he's ready. Yeah, let's let's make that fight happen. Why not? There you go. 28 year old Suzuki then you realize this is 97 <laughs> well the Suzuki has hair what's going on Ooh. I think this I think this young guy named Tito Ortiz is going to do pretty well I don't know about you guys he seems like a guy I should probably offer a contract to just my two just my two cents fighting farmer Royce Alger Now, of course, I have to see the fact that they have the fact that they have this like Royce Alger, 2005 Iowa Wrestling Hall of Fame. OK, already, already uh, you, you're getting me there. Three wins, two losses. He only had five fights. Damn. You had a UFC fight, EC, Extreme Challenge. ICF Iowa cage fighting in 1998. So it looks like we already got that head start on the uh, on that. So yeah, a guy who's eventually going to be <laughs> a guy who's eventually going to be in the Iowa Wrestling Hall of Fame feels like a guy we should sign. This is this is the this was like part of the golden age of like <laughs> amateur wrestling in Iowa. Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll leave it as is though with that. What? N no, I don't know why they would think I'd want to watch this. Is Ray Cooper. And let's see here. Oh, these guys. Oh, okay. Matt Anderson beat local fighter. That makes sense. Matt. Oh, okay. Cause there's a couple guys on my short list that showed up for this. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Could you imagine if local fighter, if a local fighter beat one of these guys? God, that'd be, that'd be embarrassing. I feel like Renzo Gracie is a guy that if I had some money to throw at him, I could probably get him and that'd probably be worth it, I would say. He's volatile, he's fearless. Jiu-Jitsu black belt. I'm utterly shocked to know that someone with the last name Gracie is good at jujitsu. Is it like strategy to not have weight classes? I mean, if you're running eight fights, you should have enough for at least two. Um, I kind of running it like Pancrase right now where I don't have weight classes. I was going to wait until I maybe had enough to start separating some guys because I don't want to, you know, have I don't want to have like not enough guys at this point. I think if I can get like a good 30 guys, now we got 21 right now. So if I can get like a good 30, I can start separating them out a little bit. That'd probably help. 
But right now, I'm I'm just trying to make sure I can put on some fights because at this point, <laughs> I don't uh, I I don't think I really have the ability to just uh, just kind of up and uh, up and do weight classes right now. That and I always like that about pride, like the small guy and the li- like the small guy and the huge guy fighting each other. <laughs> And we have Tito Ortiz. We should we should uh, we should put him in there. All right, so we got a couple of we got a couple of name guys now. There you go. We're getting them when they're nobodies, and then they can fly away and do much better than us. <laughs> much like how that happened in Hawkeye Pro, we can uh, get these guys up there, and uh, and uh, definitely send them on their way as they sign for bigger and better promotions. Matchmaking. Tito Ortiz, who should he fight? This Bruce Baker seems like uh might be might be an idea. Doesn't really seem to be any better any better odds here. Poor Bruce Baker's looks like he's probably gonna have to go through uh Tito Ortiz. We'll just go ahead and throw that up there. I'm trying to see if there's any other Clinton Evanovich. I guess he'll have to semi-main. He's yeah, this Tito Ortiz guy's, you know, he's not really a name guy right now. Let's see here. Royce Alger, Zach Wa- Zachary White. I feel like we can get a better guy for Alger. A closer, a closer fight. We're I mean, it's not till what, May, so I think we're we're pretty okay right now. Oh, look at that, Kevin Randleman. Not signed with anybody. I just want to see. Looks like probably UFC. Yeah, UFC is going to sign Kevin Randleman. The return of Sam Cox. All right. Uh, let's see if Sam Cox is a guy that should face him. He's got that minor hand. Well, he might not still be ready to ready to start training for a fight. <clears throat> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go till Saturday. See what we got going on here. And da, 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 office matchmaking. Let's see what other fighters. All right, now we got some guys. Donald Cummo. Uh, he could face Eric Martin. This Lawrence Morris seems like it's uh, very, very close between the both of them. So let's go ahead and put them on in. And we'll put that there. Uh, let's see. Uh, see if we can give him somebody. Royce Alger. That could be an idea. Uh, I I'm, I think I'm feeling the Zachary White thing. I don't want to. I don't want Alger to to lose his first fight with us. I feel like that's. I feel like we could do better by him. <clears throat> but I still want a fairly close fight like that. Ooh, <laughs> the Iowan versus the Iowa wrestler <laughs> from Kentucky, nonetheless. But. I can I can I can deal with that. I don't know how well that's gonna work though, but we'll we'll go ahead and do that. And let's see, that's seven fights, so we got enough for at least one more. And I think I'll build up a little bit of hype for uh, Laverne Clark. I think I'll just go with low. Just build up a little bit of hype for him. Should do well, just to kind of just to kind of build up his, uh, I guess not mystique, but uh, the fact that we're gonna have a, a slightly slightly better uh, guy. <laughs> See Renzo Gracie. Let's go to Saturday. All right. Uh, let's see here. Do we have any more? All right. So we got some guys. 
Uh, doesn't look like Eric Martin is in a spot to be. All right. So, oh, yeah, actually, it's probably a good idea to maybe try to give Garner Keith something to bounce back from. And Jiu-Jitsu versus wrestling, that should be that should be interesting. There we go. And we'll just put these guys uh, up here. And I think we're solid. I think those are the eight fights we'll go for. And I think we can pretty much go to April. We're already like an hour 20 in, too. <clears throat> All right. Anything happen? Let's see. Had some American shows. Joe Chose. Uh, European show. Who the hell is this Svetlana Gordarenko? It's it's odd to see her here, but she's four and zero, and she's six foot three, and a super heavyweight. So was she like the original Gabby Garcia? Small local show. So Renzo Gracie on that one. Okay. Let's see. You know what? I might take Randy Couture now that he's exclusive with UFC. We can just take him off the short list. I don't need to hear about Randy Couture. There we go. Let's see if there's anybody else who's shown up. Hey! I spy a young Heath Herring with old Heath Herring's look. But nonetheless, young Heath Herring. I'm feeling it. I didn't know he I didn't know he was showed up this this early, 1997. Jesus. Tony Haim. This looks like a dude I would want to have in there. Boxing really does sound like that's this. This sounds like a guy I want in here. Anybody else? Hybrid fighting. Oh, another Amarillo, Texas guy. Oh, why not? Like I said, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna try to start separating some guys out, should probably have some dudes. Dave Men. All right, 150. He's four and zero. All right, brawler. Uh, I'll I'll grab him, and I think I'll be good at that point. There we go. So we're like, what, May, isn't it? Yeah, May week two. So let's just go up a week here. There we go. A little bit slow going right now until we start actually getting some, uh, some stuff going on here. All right, so men signs, Haim signs, Heath Herring signs. All right, I might add one more, one more fight then, just to see if I could add them in. Maybe we can add Heath Herring in. Uh, who's the guy? Dave Men. Uh, seems like that'd be the best choice. All right, so yeah. We'll add that fight right at the beginning there. Heath Herring making his debut. 19 years old. Jesus. All right. Like I said, anyone who wants to take no more than a couple hundred bucks, I'm more than happy to give it to them. <laughs> All right. Nothing happening there. Uh... Oh, Sakuraba is in Pride. Okay. Let's just skip to the end, see what happens. All right, Sakuraba won his prelim fight. Oh, that's good. And he's charismatic. So that'll be helpful. And, oh, 
Got something here. Sakuraba versus Isuka Minoa. Okay. It's a Pride FC2. Looks like that's after our, our deal. All right. Mm -hmm. I think there was a UFC fight. Let's see. UFC 14, Walid Ishmael. Mark Coleman beating Tank Abbott. Looks like it was a great fight. Knockout of the night. Coleman knocked him out in 240. Jesus. Mark Coleman. I'm not I'm not completely surprised though to hear Tank Abbott getting knocked out. <laughs> two months, two weeks. He's gonna he's gonna need some time. Gonna need just a little bit of time. Uh oh, Clinton Evanovich already. Oh no. Well he's already signed for the it's an really? Oh wow, Lola hold oh Jesus do they jump up fast. Good lord. Yeah, this is why I'm signing a bunch of like sort of nobodies, because I figured this shit was gonna happen. <laughs> I figured I was gonna start losing guys quickly. I was really hoping they were just gonna start filling out their uh uh, filling out their uh, rosters and not taking my guys right away. Uh, let's see. Carl Ogibene. Uh, not really anybody. That guy, maybe? I don't mind him. 100 bucks, why not? Go ahead and sign him. There you go. All right, our credibility's up. Oh, we had the something taken away for it. We're losing. Oh, it's because we made some money, but we'll lose it again once we once it shows that we lost some. All right, I think I might get it to right here. And call it good for right now. Clinton Evanovich went to the UFC. All right, so that's going to be his. Did I did I sign him for? Yes, I did. I had him face uh, Carlos Newton. Oh, I hope he wins now. Oh, it looks like he should. So Dragon Ball Jiu-Jitsu guy, and Clinton's going to be uh, off to the UFC after this. So should be helpful but i probably leave it there at least for uh wmma because i feel like going through the show is going to take me at least a good 20 ish minutes we're about an hour and a half in already but uh i kind of want to go to not sure what i want to go to <laughs> i'll figure it out here in a second but uh there you go we got uh us uh, you know, good series of guys right now. We might start looking into, uh, um, you know, separating them out into weight class. I'm trying to see here. Got a lot of heavyweights, but I think we got enough uh, non-heavyweights that we should be able to have something of a, uh, something of a, maybe like a heavyweight and then a light heavyweight that's just like... A light heavyweight that has no bottom but tops out at 205 and then a heavyweight is just 205 to whatever. So maybe if I give it a year, that's when we can have belts. <laughs> um, but there you go. Let's see if the rankings did anything. There we go. So we have some sort of rankings there. Egan Inouye at the top. Dave Men in second. Laverne Clark third david hood fourth heath herring in fifth tony haim in sixth and we got some we got some faces we got some actual faces you know there's still a lot of uh blank names or blank faces i could fill in but uh you know we got we got some we got some guys with uh, actual pictures some actual guys so uh yeah and 28 fighters like i said we get to about 30 that's generally where i was thinking uh thinking uh when we could uh start separating guys out so there you go uh go ahead and save that and that'll be the first episode of this local to global already just a 
Uh, already seeming to have guys already moving on after one freaking show. And, uh, you know, our popularity is 2.5%. I don't know what that means for how many people show up at the next event, but, I mean, it's better than nothing, so. It's something. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. And, uh, yeah, I'll move on to something else here on stream if you're watching this, though, on YouTube. Thank you very much for continuing to watch. I appreciate it. And uh, I will see you next time.